time to move on to the second step of our restoration. Let's get on with it. Good day and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. And we're moving on with step two of our restoration of our Heath kit. If you don't know the steps, I've laid them out in a uh, uh, video uh, to restore uh, tube radio step by step. You may want to take a peek at that. I'll probably put a link to it in the comment section below. I have uh, organized the restoration of these radios into simple steps that anybody can follow. So we're going to go ahead and execute step two today, which is power supply and dealing with the base of the audio tube and the electrolyte capacitor at it. And as per usual, if you're enjoying our series of videos, please subscribe. We could really use the support. I know we've got now 20,000 users routinely watching this channel, and if we can get you to subscribe, that would be great. Certainly would be a stronger community uh, if you did. So uh, today we're going to be doing our step two, as I said, which is looking after the power supply, the filter capacitors, the line cord, and some work at the uh, base of the audio tube. So I've got an old computer cord here that I'm going to be using to update this old two wire to a proper three prong. I've got my strain relief to which I'll open up a hole in the back figure for that to go in. I've got a selection of capacitors here and I've got some terminal blocks. The uh, challenge with this one and I'm going to zoom in and we'll get a, a, a better feel for uh, what's going on is the filter capacitor on this one is such a small can. Normally I restaff them. I cut them open and I put capacitors in them. And the rating on that on that particular cap, the heat kit is used. It's a three section cap. Each second section is 20 microfarads, and it's rated at 300 volts. Um, I'm going to be putting in 450 volt caps. I don't usually stock 300 volt caps, and even if I did, trying to get all three into that tiny little can would be difficult. So I'm going to have to use terminal blocks and mount them on the bottom. Not my most favorite way of doing it, but it works okay. If you do it properly and you make everything structurally sound, it's safe, it's an acceptable modification. I prefer to try to keep them as stock hooking as possible, but in this case, the can is just too small, so we're going to have to do it this way. So I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see how limited we are with space as compared to the size of the capacitor. Okay, here we are zoomed in on our... Uh, filter cap kind of in the center here of your picture. Um, and what I have to do now is I have to be able to get three capacitors this size in this area. And you can kind of sort of see that it's going to be tight. And this, these are the terminal blocks I'm going to be using to screw down, hopefully to these available screws. I'll put new ones in if I have to. So as I remove it, I'll have to invent some new stuff, maybe uh, change a little bit of the wiring length and whatnot so it'll be a little bit more work than usual but we'll get it done but i've got a good selection of capacitors and uh, and terminal blocks here to go um, but first stop is is we're going to be replacing the power cord so we're going to cut this old one out we're going to put a new one in and we're going to ground this chassis so that's going to be our first part of this journey is doing the power cord the second part of the journey is going to be dealing with this filter cap the third part of the journey is going to be dealing with this um, this old electrolic here and checking all the resistors in around the uh, the base of the uh, the uh, audio tube here to make sure that they're all still within range. So with that, I'm going to embark on the first part of this journey, which is replacing the power cord, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, phase one complete. We've removed the old power cord. Uh, Made a larger hole, put a new strain relief in, three prong plug, which is an old recovered computer plug. Um, we have ensured that the hot wire goes to the fuse, which is, this is very nice. He's kit put a fuse in this unit, so I didn't have to. So that was easy pickings for me to, to wire this up. It's got a nice, good, solid ground to the chassis, and of course the neutral goes to the other lead. But always make sure that your hot goes hits a fuse first and then goes to a switch, regardless of which radio you're working on. 
And it's always a, a, a very solid idea to have a, a ground pin unless you're working on a hot chassis radio. Um, so just a little bit of a public service announcement here. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't harp on this as much as I should. When you bring a tube radio home for repair, do not plug it in until you've gone through and replaced the filter caps, um, the wax paper caps that may be in it. Um, some of the older radios, like some of the older broadcast radios that are in wooden boxes, often have what's called an electrostatic speaker. And if you've got a bad cap, it's very easy to burn the windings out in that, uh, in that speaker. Um, similarly, if on a plate side you have a, a noise suppressing cap to ground or something along that way, or uh, it's, you know, you can burn out an IF transformer, you, you can damage the radio, you can damage or uh, create what I, uh, a problem with what I call unobtainium, which is parts that you can't get or are very difficult to get, or you've got to wait and get a junker radio to get a replacement. So do not turn or plug the radio in until you've gone through my five steps, um, you know, ensuring that it's safe to turn on and that you're not going to damage, uh, damage parts in the radio. Like I, I've, I've not plugged this one in or turned it on until I go through it. Um, you know, this old rectrolic cap here is blowing alarm bells with me. I would not want to run it with that in place. And this uh, filter cap here, which is my next uh, part of this journey of, of, of step two, which is uh, replacing the filter cap. So with the uh, power line done, now with, again with a nice three-prong plug wired properly, I'm going to get into, the, uh, into changing that filter cap. And uh, again, uh, it's a little bit tight uh, for space. We'll, we'll see where we go from there. So uh, I'll be back in a minute again. All right, well, a bit of a startling discovery. <clears throat> While mounting the uh, filter caps, as you can see, I've started up here with a, a terminal block on one cap, and I put another terminal block in. I discovered that this red wire here is not soldered to the terminal. It's just hanging free. Just give me a second. Let me see if I can zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm pretty sure you can see that uh, there's a hook there. They hooked it on, but they neglected to solder. And you can see if I wiggle it, it's clearly loose. That would have been a deal breaker for this radio. And that's probably why it's uh, been floating around and uh, it's not in anybody's collection. It was, uh, that would be a make or break. Uh, and probably some significant poor performance of operation at all. So it was a good find. We, uh, you know, and this is uh, pretty typical of what you can find with uh, heat kits, heat kit stuff. Um, you know, uh, us people were not necessarily all perfect, and uh, the original uh, builder of this made a bit of a blunder. So we will repair it and move on and uh, continue on with replacing filter caps. Well, okay. Here is my answer to the filter capacitor or space problem. I've installed three terminal blocks, one here, one here, and one up here. There's a capacitor soldered to each of them, and each of the terminal blocks has a ground and a positive lead, which works out well. Uh, I got lucky. I had some of this nice red heath kit type wiring in stock, so I've lengthened some of these up. I've cut the three terminals off the old cap. I'm just going to leave it in place so the top of the chassis looks uh, stock, if you will. There's just two grounds here. One of them is the ground for the filament, and the other is the center tap from the transformer for uh, high voltage. So this uh, power resistor here, they tend to get warm, and it's about 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch above these filter caps, so the heat won't be a problem. Um, now, one thing that I did do here was is the uh, manufacturer used 20 microfarad caps in each of these spots, and I have upgraded to 33. Uh, I can get away with that with this receiver because it doesn't have a choke, so I get a little bit of extra uh, filtering for this. Um, so I think it turned out nice. So the next step is um, is dealing with this 
electrolic here and uh, just checking all of the resistors around the base of the audio tube. So I'm uh, going to do that next and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I went through the audio stage. Um, surprise, surprise, the uh, cathode resistor of the main output tube was out as was the plate of the uh, preamp. Now that tube is a 6EB8 and it's actually a double tube. There's two tubes in one, so to speak. So the plate on the preamp tube resistor here was way off. No surprise there at all. And the cathode resistor on the actual output side of that tube was also considerably out. All the others around that tube are okay. And as you can see, I've installed a new modern electrolic in there. So that is done. Um, so that's all buttoned up. Uh, this pretty much concludes step two of our restoration process. Um, I have another video out there called Learn to Restore Tube Radio Step by Step. If you'd like to learn the steps, watch that video because I'm currently working those steps right now with this restore. So watch the, watch the video um, if you haven't done so already and you'll get an idea where we're going. Um, I don't know about you all. I thought that loose connection that was unsoldered was quite an amazing discovery. And it kind of gets me all excited. I want to know if this radio is going to run, run at all or not. Will it run? Will it not run? Uh, will it run properly for the first time in its life? Who knows? But you know what? Stay tuned. We're going to find out. Um, take a moment if you haven't subscribed and subscribe to our channels. If you like the old radio stuff, the old tube radios, we got more great how-to videos coming up, and we got more interesting radios coming up as well. Um, certainly, it's going to be uh, interesting. So that concludes this video. And uh, we'll see you again in the next one in, in part three coming up. So uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in and please subscribe.